Hey everybody, I'm Jeff Bunka. I am an engineering mentor and drive coach for team 5895 Petty Robotics. Um, yeah, so today we're gonna be analyzing finals two, uh, the match finals two from the Hatboro Horsham 2025 district event here in the first mid-Atlantic region. Uh, so let's go ahead and intro our teams. Uh, so on the red side of the field, we have Alliance One. Uh, Alliance One has a captain of Krypton Cougars uh, out of Palmyra, Pennsylvania. Uh, they are, uh, at this point, uh, the three-time Hatboro Horsham District Champs. Eventually, they become the, the four-time, uh, as of uh, a few hours ago. Um, we have 341 Miss Daisy uh, out of Ambler, Pennsylvania, one of the perennial powerhouses from FMA and a Hall of Fame team. And then rounding out Alliance 1, we have 2559 Normality Zero from Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. Uh, Normality Zero uh, has been on the hunt for a blue banner since 2014, so congratulations to them for ending the drought. On the other side of the field in blue, we have Alliance 4, uh, captained by the Fighting Robo Vikings out of Warminster, Pennsylvania, um, who have been looking for another blue banner since 2018. Um, 2590 Nemesis, uh, representing Robbinsville, New Jersey, uh, another classic FMA powerhouse team. And then finally, 427, uh, a team called Lancelot out of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Uh, Lancelot started last year in 2024, uh, and this is actually the first instance of them playing in a set of finals matches since the team was created. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. True competitors know that every second counts. That's why Kettering University challenges you to dive in right away as a first-year student. Participating in robotics programs helps Kettering students secure a valuable co-op. Whatever your interests, Kettering gives you more space to work faster and win faster. Learn more at kettering.edu slash first. Anymark provides superior service with the reliability that teams expect. Check out their sport gearbox and ratchet sport options to their tried and true compliant wheels used by teams all over the world. From mechanical and electrical products to tools and hardware, head on over to Anymark.com for your one-stop shop of high quality and affordable solutions. All right, so let's jump into this uh, analysis here. Match two at Hatboro Horsham 2025 district event. Um, so, uh, first off, let's move to the end of the autonomous period and point out the score. Uh, so right now, coming out of auto, uh, Red has a reasonably good lead, uh, given you know the time of the season, right? Red is up by 11 points uh, with a total of 33 to Blues 22. Um, so Red, Red is in a good position as we move into teleoperated. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and scrub to 2 minutes 12 seconds now, uh, and we'll pause right here. And just talk about the layout of these two alliances. So this, uh, you know, the layouts that these alliances are using are, are pretty similar, um, and they're pretty standard, right? Both alliances have two offensive robots uh, and one defensive robot. So the defense, the defenders uh, move to the other side of the field fairly quickly and start to deploy certain defensive tactics, uh, while both of the offensive robots on each alliance are feeding from uh, the human loading zone. Um, and they each have their own set of human loading, uh, human loading zone uh, real estate. So they're spreading the offense out uh, to try and make it harder to defend. Good, a good standard format um, for both alliances. So as we move on here, you can see we'll move to two minutes. Um, and at the two minute mark, um, you know, you see here that once the opponent uh, is out of the loading zone, team 427, the defender for the blue alliance, actually does something super creative uh, and very, very smart. So they have a, a shorter robot, which is somewhat of a rarity in this game. You know, we have a tall pick and play style game. So height is, is valuable for, for scoring. Uh, 427 as the defender is shorter and what you're going to see them do is they're going to defend the loading zone that they've selected in this case the loading zone allocated to the Krypton Cougars uh, and then once the Krypton Cougars are out of the loading zone and you know are about into the the, the reef safe zone uh, 427 actually pushes up against the driver station wall uh, what's interesting about this is their their drive team uh, is uh, no stranger to the fact that there are significant blind spots on the on all FRC fields, um, but one that is consistent uh, so far uh, year in and year out is the blind spot that's created uh, in the area just up against the wall that you're standing behind as a drive team. 
So what's interesting here is 427 is playing good defense, and then when the defensive opportunities have diminished, instead of standing in the field of view of the drivers that they're trying to defend against, they actually push up against the, the, the driver station wall, uh, and they're able to hold a, a certain level of an element of surprise. Uh, so when another robot re-enters the human player zone, um, 427 is able to kind of jump in out of nowhere uh, and defend them, uh, giving them somewhat of a defensive advantage. Awesome. So let's go to one minute left in the match. You're going to see 341 here, Miss Daisy. Um, so this robot had become uh, a huge presence right out of the gate at this event because they had somewhat of a rarity uh, equipped on their robot. They had a ground coral intake. Um, most of the other robots at the event, not all of them, but most of them uh, were human player loading specialists. Um, Daisy can do both, um, but they opted to focus on uh, ground intake. And you can see here at one minute, roughly, uh, this robot is going to sort of you know, encounter a jam. So I've been told that 341 is already redesigning or, or upgrading that intake, um, but they are able to respond accordingly and switch to a human playing, human player loading uh, method uh, to acquire Coral for scoring. Showing a lot of really good, uh, you know, on the fly thinking uh, to prevent from any efficiency drops in terms of their uh, offensive execution. Right, so now let's get to the final 30 seconds here. Um, you're going to see what's interesting. What makes this match so exciting is that blue is actually able to close the gap. So up until this point, red had been sort of pacing ahead of blue, uh, holding on to that reasonable point lead uh, that they had coming out of Autonomous. But blue is able to close the gap uh, and make it a very, very close match. Um, so what you're going to see here is that... Um, one of the defenders, 2559 for the Red Alliance, actually pushes forward and plays a more conventional defensive uh, style where they're just sort of camping a human player zone uh, and restricting 50% of the human player loading opportunities from, uh, from the Blue Alliance. So instead of sort of fighting through, uh, the Blue Alliance, specifically 2590 and 2607, are going to uh, off sync from each other. They're gonna share one human player zone, which is a little bit more restrictive, uh, but they do it in such a way that while one of them is loading from that human player zone, the other one is scoring. And then once those two processes are complete, they switch and they just sort of rinse and repeat there to try and boost their throughput uh, as the match starts to close out. Right, so uh, final score ends up being super tight. Like we said, we had a final score of 122 uh, to 121. Razor thin point differential, um, but thanks to some solid planning uh, and the ability to adapt on the fly, Alliance 1 comes out on top, uh, taking the W uh, for uh, the first district event here in First Mid-Atlantic. Super, uh, super exciting match, right? Uh, you know, very, uh, very exciting, very dynamic. Both alliances deploying, um, you know, some, some, some creative approaches. Uh, and, and while they didn't come out with the, with the win, uh, you know, definitely hats off to Alliance for uh, our finalist alliance here at Hatboro Horsham um, for deploying a creative twist on a relatively conventional strategy, right? They were able to uh, sort of turnstile uh, themselves in and out of one human playing uh, human player loading station uh, and then they had this sort of uh, you know creeping through the shadows approach to defense uh, which made 427 uh, you know a very very challenging robot to score against all right well uh, stay tuned to fun for more content just like this make sure to comment below on anything you notice that you that I might have missed um, you know looking at this match and if there's any other matches that you're interested in having an analysis done on, uh, you know, definitely drop us a line as well. Um, I'm Jeff with Fun Robotics Network and Team 5895. Uh, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the bell to stay up to date on future fun videos. Animark provides superior service with the reliability that teams expect. Check out their sport gearbox and ratchet sport options to their tried and true compliant wheels used by teams all over the world. From mechanical and electrical products to tools and hardware, head on over to animark.com for your one-stop shop of high quality and affordable solutions. 
True competitors know that every second counts. That's why Kettering University challenges you to dive in right away as a first-year student. Participating in robotics programs helps Kettering students secure a valuable co-op. Whatever your interest, Kettering gives you more space to work faster and win faster. Learn more at kettering.edu first.